Uh, today's speaker is Amy Luther, who comes to us from the Aging and Disability <coughs> Resource Center of Pierce County. She is a dementia care specialist, so please help me welcome Amy. Thank you, Tara. I'm going to give you some handouts here that I've prepared. Wow, sure. So I have been primarily a Pierce County resident my whole life. I'm from the other side of the county over in Elmwood. I live just north of Elmwood, very close to where I grew up. And uh, I started working for the ADRC in Pierce County about a year ago as the dementia care specialist. The dementia care specialist position was a grant funded position that uh, the manager of the ADRC, Heather Conway, applied for. Uh, there are several, about 25 dementia care specialists in the state of Wisconsin now. There was five positions added last year and they hope to add another eight this year. But the idea in that is our aging population is going to double in the next 20 years and as that aging population is doubling, also the risk for uh, developing dementia with age doubling. So we really need to be able to support people in their homes and in their communities and try to keep them there as long as possible. Um, so I will start with my presentation and if you have any questions you can ask me right away or we can save a few minutes at the end. So I'm part of the ADRC, the Aging and Disability Resource Center, and we have a bunch of different social work type positions there. Information and assistance specialists are the social workers that help people um, that need support to stay in their home, may need funding support, may need um, some services to come into their home to stay as independent as possible. Um, a wide variety of services, and they do intake in our office, so if um, you have questions of disability or elderly concerns, contact the ADRC. That's the first place that you should call if someone's needing those type of services and they'll direct you to the right person. Uh, the benefit specialists help with Medicare, uh, Medicare drug plans. Uh, the disability specialists help with people that um, have a disability and may need to complete that paperwork. They're very busy, especially this time of the year with a um, open enrollment for Medicare Part D through December 7th. Um, but Jane, who's in our office, is wonderful with doing that, and Robin in disability is great as well. Uh, adult Protection Services, that's a really busy area right now too with um, identity theft and scams and everything, and any of you in financial business or otherwise probably are aware of how much of an issue that is, and if you throw a little dementia into the mix or a little aging and um, people aren't used to not being able to trust others that contact them and seem friendly and concerned, that is a huge issue and so they're extremely busy right now. Uh, we also have nutrition programs like Meals on Wheels, transportation programs, volunteer drivers for medical appointments and things like that. Um, I'm the dementia care specialist and then I also help with caregiver support resources and programs as well as a couple other people in my office. Um, as a dementia care specialist, I serve individuals that have cognitive loss and their families, um, providing education, support, and resources in communities. And I, um, a large portion of my position is going out into communities, doing presentations like this, contacting people for home visits, uh, working with caregivers to support them. Um, we want people to be more aware of the symptoms of dementia um, and decrease the stigma associated with it so people continue to get out rather than being socially isolated. Um, we want to help people to maintain their purpose in life and their well-being by learning about dementia and addressing it early on in the um, disease. Oftentimes people aren't diagnosed, if at all, until later into the progression of the disease and that makes a lot of things more difficult. Um, and I also like to remind people and groups that uh, dementia is a disease or it's a symptom of 
the symptoms are symptoms of diseases that are like high blood pressure, like diabetes. They're just one one thing that affects you, and so people shouldn't feel like if they were diagnosed with dementia that their life is over, that they can't continue to do the things they want. It's not something that just happens one day and that's it. They need to keep being involved, keep pursuing things as much as they can, and get the support to do that. So dementia is a set of symptoms associated with a decline in your cognitive abilities that's severe enough that it impacts your daily life. Um, it may include changes in memory, which is what everybody thinks of when they hear the word Alzheimer's disease or dementia, but it also can affect your communication or language skills, your ability to focus or pay attention, your reasoning or judgment or perception of the environment, but it's not normal aging. It's not normal for you to lose your abilities to think and reason and um, pursue your typical lifestyle as you age. Uh, currently, there's about 630 people living with dementia in Pierce County and 1,280 in St. Croix County, and those numbers are expected to double in the next 20 years. Um, in the group of people over 85, about one in three will have some type of dementia. And people often think that people living with dementia are in nursing homes or in assisted living, but honestly, only about 20% of them live in a facility and the rest are at home. And of the people that live at home, almost 30% live alone. And sometimes those people that are living alone don't even have any family. It's not just that their family members are away, but they may not have anyone at all to look out for them. Um, dementia. I'll ask a question. What, sure. what do you do about that? What do we do about that? Well, we encourage people to be more aware of what the symptoms of dementia are. So if they're concerned about somebody, they could encourage them to call the ADRC. Um, they could support them a little bit if everybody could lend a helping hand to someone that they know is alone and encourage them to get the support they need or help to support them just one little way. That goes a long ways. But it's not always easy. And especially if the person that might be living alone doesn't realize that they have any issues, because that's often the case too. Sometimes people are aware that their memory is poor and they accept help, but other times they think that you're trying to belittle them or you're trying to um, control them. They may not lack complete insight as to their losses. So this 30%, is that in the number that you reflected above? Or is this 30% over and above that number? The 30% um, of people, there's so there's 20% living in facilities and yep. the other 70% live at home. And of the 70% of people 30, that, that live at home, 30% of that number gotcha. live alone. Yes? I want to follow up on it. How about their financial affairs and so forth? You know, if they have to mention paying bills and Yeah, that can so be really like difficult that. because if they don't remember to pay their bills, <laughs> they get in trouble there, or they're very high risk for someone to take advantage of them. I was just talking with a coworker yesterday about somebody who has been scamming a woman and she's suspicious of the people trying to help her, like her daughter or her son, but she's not at all suspicious of the guy that calls her every day and says he's her friend and he just wants to help her, but please send money. You know, so it's really a, a challenging situation. And so if you can encourage somebody to call the ADRC or um, report, that's why APS, the adult protection, is so busy right now because they're getting calls every day, people that are getting scammed or identity theft issues or um, people that are living alone and don't realize that they need help but they're not safe at home or not safe at home at least without any services. And there's over 60 types of dementia and maybe even more, I'm hearing that that number is even larger now. Um, the most common diagnosis is Alzheimer's disease, but a researcher that just did a presentation the other day from Texas says that mixed type dementia is actually the most prevalent now, which means that Alzheimer's is mixed maybe with Lewy body or frontal temporal dementia, vascular dementia, but there's not just often one type of dementia that's affecting the person. How's it diagnosed? I mean, is there is it brain, brain waves? Um, they can do brain scans, but that's not 
definitive. Um, the only true diagnosis is after death. But they can rule out medical causes, which is extremely important if somebody has changes in their function to get to the doctor. And again, that's why I'm out um, trying to help people to be more aware and to be proactive. Because a lot of times people just start withdrawing, not socializing, maybe not calling people on the phone because they don't want people to realize that they're having problems. So there's really no way to figure out what kind it is until um, not, not completely except through autopsy, but they can rule out medical causes, start with that, and they can do a CT scan, make sure there's not a brain tumor. They can do um, blood tests to make sure that there's not a deficiency there. Um, and then they can look at the symptoms that they're seeing because um, a typical Alzheimer's dementia might present with someone forgetting how to do their checkbook or somebody dressing in clothes for summer when it's winter or, you know, things that are typical of Alzheimer's disease. Where somebody with Lewy body dementia, the first symptom, Lewy body typically happens earlier in life and it affects your, you usually lack insight and maybe lack of filter and you often fall and you may suspect that your neighbor next door is a communist or your neighbor next door is stealing your money when you're not home. When you go to work during the day, they're coming over and stealing your money because I know it was supposed to be right here in this cupboard and it's not there. But in reality, that's not what's happening. But the problem with Lewy body dementia is that uh, the behavior can be really um, different and people may be of the age where they're still working, still very active. And they present like someone who suddenly has maybe a mental illness or um, Frontal temporal dementia is very much that way too. People lack a filter. They might go in a store and take things without paying for them and not realize anymore that they can't leave work without or can't leave the store without paying for something. Or they may go to work and don't remember how to access their files on their computer. Or they um, struggle socially. They may say something completely inappropriate to someone. Anything. I think they ever acted like that before. If it's something different, it could be not a medical issue. It could be like a frontal temporal dementia early in the progression, but people don't realize that because they're a younger person. A lot of times those happen in the 50s, in your 50s or early 60s, sometimes 40s. Um, vascular dementia is like stroke-related dementia where you suddenly have dementia as a result of a bleed or a blockage in your brain. But again, reminding people that it's a medical diagnosis like any other diagnosis, so we can't just start treating people differently if they have a diagnosis of dementia. And we want to encourage them to seek out answers if they're having problems rather than isolate themselves and let it progress without addressing things like financial concerns or health care decisions. So one thing that I can provide in the community um, in our uh, social workers are information and assistance workers when they help people they do a memory screen and it's a quick and free wellness tool um, not meant to diagnose but meant to start a conversation about um, potential cognitive changes um, that's a quick test they have people sit down and um, name as many animals as they can name in a minute and there's a guideline there for that um, 14 is an average amount of animals. And if they can't name that many in a minute, that could be concerning. But again, they need to talk with their health provider about that. Um, and there's also um, a short-term recall where they need to remember some words and then draw a clock. That's a very common um, cognitive check, is drawing a clock and seeing if they can do that accurately. Um, many health issues can mimic dementia, so if changes happen in cognition, the person should see their health provider to rule those out. Depression and anxiety, social isolation, alcohol use, poor nutrition or hydration, all those things can impact your um, brain and affect its ability to work like it should. And as a dementia care specialist or anyone in the ADRC, there's no charge for our services. There are your tax dollars at work. So we encourage people to really contact us and um, get that education, get um, someone to help look at things 
if you have a concern. And I support the person and empower them, encourage them to visit a diagnostic memory clinic. Yep. Um, they're early in their progression, it's especially important to rule out the medical causes, but if they still are having trouble without any finding any medical causes through their local provider, they might want to see a specialist, like you'd see a kidney specialist or a neurologist, see a specialty neurologist that specializes in diagnostic um, memory clinic, in a diagnostic memory clinic. Um, and I'm going to encourage a person, if they're having issues, to find out all they can about the disease and to focus on preparation for more challenging times because dementia typically is a progressive disease. It gets worse over time. Um, so we want them to have conversations with family, friends, neighbors about their wishes for uh, health choices, finances, um, and to stay positive and be healthy. There's a ton of research right now on what you can do to maintain your brain and maintain your health and they're finding what's healthy for your heart is healthy for your brain. Lots of exercise, eating well, socializing with others, that's extremely important that people continue to do the things that they have done to stay social, contact people, um, and enjoy themselves and have a purpose in life and use their strengths to live well. Even if there's some things that they can't do anymore, if they can't balance their checkbook anymore, they might be able to do something else um, to maintain their uh, abilities. And support for the caregiver is a huge role. Um, caregivers are there 24-7, especially as dementia progresses. Um, so they need tools and resources. And I think above all, and somebody mentioned it, here today, they need to know that they can't do it all alone and they can't keep doing it 24 7 indefinitely. Um, it's very stressful and stress is terrible for your own physical health. <coughs> and they need to know that legal and health um, considerations are in place ahead of time so that's not something they need to worry about later down the road because if you don't have a health care power of attorney in place prior to the dementia worsening, you can end up having to go to court for guardianship when that person can't make their decisions anymore. And that's a costly and lengthy process, time consuming and really difficult. And you can <coughs> steer clear of that a lot of times if you talk about healthcare wishes ahead of time and get to know what the person may want and get family comfortable with um, knowing that they can make those decisions in that person's best interest and in, uh, with what they wanted. Um, for their life. And for caregivers to know that it's okay to take a break and to get help to share in caregiving, um, we have some grant programs, some monies available at the county in several different programs to provide companionship to someone so the caregiver can get away for a few hours. We have the Memory Cafe, which has been really successful here in Prescott, and I'll talk a little bit about that more later. Um, people can go out to that together. There's a caregiver support group that started in Prescott here just a couple of months ago. Um, or home care that can come in and give someone a break while they do some. I guess we're here to it. Programs. Memory cafes. Uh, our memory cafe meets at the First National Bank in the lower level twice a month on Friday mornings. And it's a social group for the person that's living with dementia and their caregiver and we enjoy coffee conversation and community experiences and really it's um, just a nice time for people to get together, connect. We've found that people are really enjoying it and looking forward to it, that they come there and they say, especially the men, they come and say, oh I was so looking forward to seeing you guys again, it was so nice. Um, and we, just, we might play Pass the Pigs or we might play another dice game or we might play charades or we might reminisce about things that happened at Christmas time when we were a kid or um, anything and everything about our animals. But it's just a social time where we're all together and don't have any other worries at that point. Um, support groups, we started that at Joy Lutheran in August. Uh, there was a request for that and so we've had a few people attending that and that's an opportunity for the caregivers to get out and just 
take a break, talk with other people that are going through the same thing. Um, sometimes caregivers will come to a support group even after they've lost their loved one or they've placed them in a facility. They still need that support or they feel the need to share what they've learned through their journey with other people. They feel that that's super important. Um, so we have that once a month right now here in Prescott on Thursday, the second Thursday of the month. And DICE is an evidence evidence-based program to modify challenges in caregiving that's a one-to-one -one situation where I could go out and work with a family um, perhaps um, spouse and the person living with dementia to address a, a challenging situation and we don't like to not call it a challenging behavior because it's not really about the person if the person is doing something that's difficult it's them trying to express a need that they have unmet need and so what we need to do is figure out what we can do differently to meet that need. Uh, it might be helping someone figure out how to give a shower without um, resistance because there can be environmental factors like the temperature of the room or um, their fear of falling, uh, slipping in the tub that, or accessing the tub that can be a problem. Um, can be the caregiver feeling rushed and feeling like, hurry up, I have to get this done, I have to do it right now because we always do it on Thursday morning, so let's hurry up and get it done. And that causes anxiety and frustration on both parts. So we work through that, and that's a program that I can help people with. <coughs> dementia Live is a hands-on experience that simulates what it might be like to live with dementia. Um, goggles, glasses, or goggles, headphones, a lot of noise to confuse you and gives caregivers and people in the community a, a feeling of what it's maybe like to live with dementia and how frustrating it can be if somebody gives you three directions at once and you don't catch two of them or any of them. Um, that's really eye-opening to people. The Dementia Friends is probably my favorite program. Um, that's uh, something that was started in the UK and it's a global movement with goal of changing how people think, act, and talk about dementia. Um, again, increasing awareness, decreasing the stigma. And people learn key information and turn that understanding into action, like I talked about with uh, being a neighbor to someone or a friend to someone who might need your service. It might be as little as giving them a ride to church on Sunday or bringing their groceries home for them or walking their dog, something little, not even that big. But. And then there's dementia friendly business training. Um, businesses, civic groups, faith communities, um, any setting um, I can provide a training to. And if 50% or more of their staff is um, trained, then they receive this We Are Dementia Friendly cling, window cling for their business. And I'm going to be doing that at the Wisconsin Credit Union here in three weeks. So that'll be my first go at that alone. I did that last year in uh, St. Croix County at Wisconsin with uh, my coworker Nancy from St. Croix County. And so I mentioned, I think, some of these things that, that are happening in Prescott. Um, Memory Cafe, we've been going for a year now and it's been consistently attended and growing a little, not a lot yet, but we've got a great group and we have a lot of fun and laugh and share friendship. Prescott High School student, we had a student involved early, at, um, early on after I started my position. Um, somebody in the community suggested that a high school student could uh, do an ad for Memory Cafe. So they produced that, put it all together, and it was on the local cable channel. I don't know if that's been on at all lately. Yeah, I think so. Get it. Somebody saw it the other day. Yeah, oh good. So that was great and lots of fun. Um, I presented to the Chamber of Commerce, I think it was, I think that's right, about a year ago, quite a few months ago anyway, um, and the, myself and the ADRC has participated in community ed health fair the last two years and had a booth there. Um, Senior Gathering Place hosted a presentation on dementia a few months ago. Um, caregiver support group was started, I talked about that at Joy Lutheran. Community Ed hosted Dementia Friends Info Session. We had that in the end of September, and I'd love to do that again somewhere, anywhere anyone would like to have me, or a um, dementia-friendly business training like we'll be doing at Wisconsin Credit Union. 
So our, our goal is to become dementia friendly throughout the county. And we do that by learning about dementia and sharing it with others, by demonstrating patience and helpfulness to people that are living with dementia and their caregivers, and by referring people to the ADRC for services and resources. And I listed just a few things here that I'm in groups that I'm involved with. The Caregiver Coalition provides an educational program each year in New Richmond um, at WITC, and that is attended by two to 300 people, very popular in the three counties here. Uh, Prescott Senior Gathering Place hosts the Memory Cafe and promotes dementia-friendly efforts in Prescott. Staying Put is a volunteer organization in Spring Valley, and I wish we could um, copy that in every community in Pierce County because they help a bunch of people with just little things like I mentioned, getting their groceries, giving them a ride somewhere, calling them and visiting, just trying to keep people independent in their homes as long as possible. And they host a memory cafe in Spring Valley and promote dementia friendly efforts there. And then the St. Croix Valley Dementia Coalition works on education and dementia friendly initiatives. Uh, the Lifelong Singers Dementia Friendly Sunday is the second Sunday of June and that'll be next year on the 14th in Hudson. But this Sunday we're having an event, a veterans event at New Richmond at the American Legion at three o'clock in the afternoon be singing uh, patriotic songs and presenting the color guard and uh, celebrating veterans there. So that's probably going to be our other event that we're really going to focus on with that group. And the Lifelong Singers Choir is um, people that are living with dementia and a caregiver or a friend, someone that likes to sing, that wants to join us, or it can be anybody. It doesn't. We're trying to encourage people to join this group because music really is powerful for people that are living with dementia and for everyone in general. And um, people that have dementia can sing and play music and enjoy music very far into the progression of dementia. Uh, in Eau Claire, they have a dementia-friendly choir and they are learning new music and doing two concerts a year and singing, I believe, four-part harmony. So they're doing a lot of things with those type of choirs and there's uh, the Giving Voice if any of you have heard of them in Minnesota that's doing that. Um, so that's something that we're trying to increase numbers on. And there's my contact information and also also the Alzheimer's Association. And let me do it on time here. Does anybody have questions? Yes. In that scenario you mentioned earlier, the family is sure that you know someone's yeah, I mean, say it's pretty probable that's the case. What kind of intervention is adult protective services or anyone able to take if, if, uh, if some individuals they're having problems at well, home? Well, they're dead set. I know this person that's scamming me, but they really are. Like, what? What? How does that? We just out? have to try to keep talking and working and supporting them and befriending them. I would say, um, thinking <coughs> of that situation, and I. It's difficult and you got to do the best you can to encourage the person to um, do otherwise and I guess ultimately take things away if, if they truly don't understand the financial aspects of it. Um, hopefully they had a financial power of attorney and are willing to let that person work for them but if they're not it probably needs to go to guardianship for the financial portion at least and perhaps the health care portion too okay. that's just the really difficult part of dementias especially like Lewy body or frontal temporal dementia or mixes of those because the people lack insight to the losses that they have Amy, is your yes. position um, grant funded or does the county fund it now? It is or? grant funded, but it's renewed every year now. So it's not, it wasn't a temporary thing and it's not something they need to reapply for every year. So if, as far as you know, it's ongoing. And yes, yes, and they're adding. It's a good service in yeah. the county. You hate to see that go away. Yeah, they're adding more. I know the governor wanted to have one in every county, but they cut it down to eight positions, I think seven county positions and one tribal, and we got lucky in Pierce County because this year they're encouraging counties to go together and then they have a point system that they go through and grade these um, grant proposals on. And you get more points or 
however they do it if you are sharing with another county. So some of my um, fellow DCS workers in other counties have three or four counties that they're responsible for. Like I know down in, I think it's called Eagle Country, mm -hmm. Crawford and Sauk. Do you do, do they just do Pierce County? County? Yeah. 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 So I'm very fortunate to be able to really concentrate efforts. And I hope the money keeps coming. Yes, I hope so too. <laughs> I just want to thank Amy because when she got this job, we knew she was coming on board, but we didn't know who was getting hired or anything at the time, and, and we just knew that dementia was something that we needed to focus on in, in our community too. So when she came on, we kind of just jumped on her, and she jumped into Prescott with two feet and embraced us, and she's offered so much to our community, so I want to thank Amy. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.